In the Fallout series, there are many factions that have their own beliefs, their own way of life, their own cultures, and they're really interesting to learn about. And the people who live among the factions feel real, and you want to invest your time learning more about them. However, they're not perfect. A matter of fact, all of the factions are pretty flawed. It's designed that way on purpose. If there was truly a perfect faction, well, that's kind of dull. It's more engaging to discuss the pros and cons of each faction. There is no best one. Only the player can form their own decision about how they feel about each faction, whether or not they think one is better than the other. And that's awesome. But the thing is, I have seen people unironically idolise factions. They will fight tooth and nail over their favourite faction and why it's the best one. And that's just cringe. Really, really cringe. I have no issue with people liking different factions. It's fun to learn about them. But morons take it too far, and let me say this, you shouldn't idolise them. For real, I've seen people saying it's base to adore the Legion, and legit think they're the best faction for the Mojave. You know, the faction that forces themselves onto women, treat women as property, they're slavers, they kidnap and torture their victims, they're homophobic, sexist, and their leaders are vile pieces of shits. Just listen to the newest talking to a female NCR courier. The West's treatment of bitches such as you is their weakness. Woman of the West, you will learn your place in my tent, and again when you beg for release on the edge of my blade. Yeah, forget about speech chats. I'm killing that piece of shit all the time now. Go wear his helmet as a trophy. Fuck the bold idiot who plays dress up. Fuck the Nias. Fuck the Legion. Apart from Anthony, he's cute and adorable. He's precious too. He's my baby. Also, side note, how dumb are the Legion that they lost the first battle of Hoover Dam because they charged with machetes at NCR Rangers who have sniper rifles? Like, mm, I know there was a whole trap that they out for them. Let's talk about, um, battle strategies. <laughs> like, um, machetes versus sniper rifles. It's pretty dumb. Yeah, we're the Legion, we got stab ya. And we're like trained to be alpha men and we're buff and we don't take shit from the NCR. We fight for Seesaw. NCR like, haha, <laughs> anti material rifle go brrrr. Now before you Legion ears, get Legion air, ah, go all mental on my comment section about how I just explained that we can like different factions and it's okay to learn from them and now here I am shitting on the Legion, they do have some admirable traits about them. Just to name a few, they're great for traders since they keep the roads safe from raiders, their soldiers are super disciplined, and they're very scary in a fight. Hell, even Seesaw, yes I'm calling him Seesaw, not Kaiser, has reasons for making the Legion. To be brief, the Legion from his point of view is the answer to the NCR problem. He's still an evil moron, but he has reasons that we can understand. Last and not least, Anthony. He carries the Legion so hard. See, even the vile and evil Legion have admirable traits about them. It's mostly Anthony though, but yeah. <laughs> Enough about them, let's talk about the Great Khans. In my opinion, I feel so bad and so sorry for them. They've been through a lot, and so many of their women and children needlessly died in bitter springs, due to the NCR, thanks to their lack of intel and miscommunication. Throughout the series, they get beaten down and backstabbed. Hell, in Fallout New Vegas, if the courier kills them all, the ending narration says, after generations of being beaten down, they were finally broken by the courier. Yet, they are not innocent. You see, they make, use, and sell drugs. Their best customers are the fiends. No, not you fiends. The fiends who watch my videos are not the Fallout ones. Anywho, the fiends are very, very bad people. Even if it's just business, that's not good. In Fallout 1, the raiders who kidnapped Tandy are called the Khans. Yikes. And, well, they are raiders. They call themselves friendly pillagers? Nope, they rob people. Even a faction I feel so sorry for, who I sympathise a lot for, are not perfect, nor innocent. How about the Brotherhood of Steel? The irony that Bethesda puts their helmet as a logo for Fallout games. People think they're the good guys, when they're actually sacks of shits. In the original Fallout, they kept to themselves. They tell the player to go away. They're basically a terrorist group, that whore tech, the tech that harms people, the ones used in war. Not the other tech that can save people, but the ones that kill them. Murderers! And they're silly and ridiculous. 
They say, when something truly bad happens, they will come out of their holes they call home to save the people. There have been many situations where bad shit has happened and they end up staying in their holes. Their inner fighting means they get nothing done. Their chain that binds system is awful. They are not the good guys like Bethesda wants to think they are. Their ideas are bad and selfish. They literally have a fetish over technology. <laughs> they jerk off when they see power armor for fuck's sake. Even in Fallout New Vegas, all four main factions want you to blow them up. Yes, you can form an alliance with them with the NCR, however you lose NCR fame when you do it. You get strolled, you're like, what the fuck, what do you do that for, you moron? <laughs> like, for real, I, I just cringe so hard when people are like, the Brotherhood of Steel, they're the good guys, they're the heroes, we should be like them, and they idolise them so much. I'm like, no, they're selfish people, they hoard tech, and they harm others. Most of them don't even know the founder's name, Roger Matson. Now, it's not all bad when it comes to the Brotherhood of Steel. Surprisingly, a lot of X members are really decent people, and the one in Fallout 1 are flawed, but they're not heartless, and they can help the player out. It's just a shame that more bad comes from them than good. Now, I could just keep going and just talk about House or the Enclave, etc. But I really want to hammer home the point about not idolising the factions. So, I want to talk about the faction I love the most. They're my current faction I side with in Fallout New Vegas. If I had to choose a faction to live in, it would be them. Yet, they have a heather, heather amount of flaws, and they have a history of hurting so many people. They have done so much wrong. So, who is the faction I'm speaking about? It's the New California Republic. Let's start off with what makes the NCR a great faction. The NCR is a democracy for the people. The most important idea that the NCR stands for is to serve the people. Tandy, the founder of the NCR, grew up in a village. As a leader, she wasn't corrupted as most politicians are. She truly served the people. It made her very popular among the NCR citizens. Her beliefs and ideas are genuinely amazing such as trying to form peace with other tribes instead of using violence. You know, trying to make friends with your neighbours. She enforced laws that banned lobbying and corporate influence, because she knew it would harm the people. Plus, even though the NCR's economy is a free market, Tandy made sure that evils of capitalism wouldn't hurt the people. She cared. Ugh, I love her so much. Plus, I don't want to brag as a feminist, but don't you think it's interesting how when a female leads, they treat their people really well, but when a man takes in charge, you know, Kimball, <coughs> um, it goes to shit? Maybe, just maybe, it's a sign that women should be leading, just saying. <laughs> Under the NCR, everyone contributes to take care of it, so that means no one is homeless, no one is neglected, everyone is fed, everyone has shelter, just to name one way people contribute is by paying taxes. The NCR and Fallout New Vegas are the only faction where you can form allies with almost every other faction, including a potential ally with the Enclave. This is a cute nod to Tandy's beliefs. Only the NCR will offer its hand in friendship, peacefully. As long as you are a citizen of the NCR and pay your taxes, they will protect you. Part of being with the NCR is that you get its protection. The NCR's end goals are always to serve the people. They do have plans to expand, but it isn't like an empire. The NCR wants as many people to be a part of it. The more people under the NCR means more people the NCR can help. The NCR Rangers of the Mojave are skilled soldiers. Thanks to them, they pretty much carried the NCR in the first battle of Hoover Dam. Anti-material rifle go brrrr. The NCR believe in equality. They are quite progressive, and they treat women really well. They are open to diversity and welcome people from all walks of life. They look after the disabled, People can believe in different religion, and they accept different sexualities, as long as they ain't violent. They are always pushing to do better, and that's pretty awesome. Also, they have an anti-discrimination law. Hate speech, racism, sexism, and all the other hateful crap is not allowed in the NCR. The NCR is a faction of acceptance, not of hatred. The power of love. And again, I, I don't want to brag about being a feminist again, but like these ideas that the NCR have, they are very similar to feminist theory. So yeah, <laughs> the fe feminism is cool, just saying. Finally, the NCR's political system means that if the current president leaves office, or dies, the faction can still continue. 
you have to remember in the Fallout series, all the factions are tribal. They're tribes. You know, Professor, you keep forgetting that. You see, in Fallout lore, once the leader of the tribe dies, 99% of the time, the tribe itself also dies off too. Not with the NCR though. Tandy being beautiful, smart, and amazing knew this. So, she made sure that the NCR always moved forward, even if their leaders died. Because remember, it's about serving the people, not the leaders. Tandy passed away, yet the NCR kept moving forward. If Kimball dies, the NCR will still keep moving forward. This alone makes the NCR stand out from the other tribes. You see, the other tribes, they just consume. They don't really have any plans, but they don't have any systems in place that keeps them going. Unlike the NCR, they have a plan for growth, expansion, and they have long-term goals. Now, just to show on the Legion again, Seesaw hates the NCR and thinks the system sucks. But when he dies, the Legion are doomed. Seesaw thinks he knows everything, but he's too prideful. He's too egotistical. His followers don't really believe in the Legion ideas. They follow him. Even the newest, the second in command, has no love for the Legion. Plus, they just harvest shit on the go. They won't last if they try to expand. They're doomed to fail. Aha! Oh yeah, I almost forgot the NCR has a dope ass train. That was the good, but the NCR are really flawed. So now let's cover the bad. And oh god, there's a lot. Tandy was amazing, and she does care for the people, but as the second president of the NCR, she stayed in power for 52 years. To quote Mr. Seesaw himself, she's the NCR's queen. As great as she was, that's not a democracy. And because of this, after she passed, this made way for the Nets leaders to slowly change laws to serve themselves over the people. This could have been avoided if she just stood down sooner and became the vice president or something like that. I don't know, maybe being second in command and she could have a guiding role for the new leaders. Instead, she dies, providing no such guidance. And that's when the corruption starts to creep in. Moving on, let's talk about bad politics starting to creep in into the NCR, thanks to bad leaders. Wow, what a surprise. Hmm, I'd pick the fifth president of the NCR, Aaron Kimball. He only got into power because he talked about expansion in the form of more resources if they made operations in the Mojave. He was even named the hero of the Mojave for killing tribes. He likes to say he was defending himself, but let's be honest, he most likely provoked them into attacking him first. He also promotes Lee Oliver as general, not because he is fit to be one, but because they were friends. And Oliver, well, he wastes resources, he's an awful person, he's gotten so many NCR troops and rangers killed. But the Tarpa, the coup de grace, Kimbo is tied to the Mojave. He needs to make sure the NCR have control over it. To do so has been a massive drain on resources, and the NCR citizens have been heavily taxed for it. Kimball represents everything that Tandy was against. The NCR serve the people. Kimball serves himself, and it results in the people suffering for it. He doesn't want peace and being friends with your neighbours like Tandy. He wants invasion and expansion. But he does have a slit speech though. For real, it, it's a really good speech. I highly recommend you listen to it, because you don't really hear it in game. So yeah, good speech though. <laughs> awful politician, does awful things. His people suffer for it. But hey, he has a really good speech. <laughs> Moving on to the other leaders, we can't forget Cassandra Moore, the garrison commander of the NCR. I'm going to be slightly lenient with her because she's a former ranger and she's been through a lot. Plus her military history is like, what the fuck? She's a super soldier, and in my opinion, she's a great example of a strong female character in Fallout New Vegas. She crushes the Legion with ease. For real, we need more female representation like her. But, importantly, she's not perfect. She's very flawed. She loves and adores Oliver and Kimball, and when it comes to making allies, she prefers the courier to wipe out the Khans in the Brotherhood of Steel. She will get pissed, and you will lose NCR fame if you become buddy buddies with the Brotherhood of Steel. Which honestly is completely justified, because number one, when she served in the front lines, she fought against the Brotherhood of Steel. And number two, the Brotherhood of Steel are just awful. Just blow them up. Like, they are just, they are just really bad. <laughs> In my opinion, she has the wisdom and the experience to make a great leader, 
and it's honestly understandable why she wants the Cherry to wipe out the Khans and the Brotherhood of Steel. They harmed the NCR. The NCR is like her second family. And it's so clear that she's just too emotionally attached to the NCR. She needs someone to give her a second opinion. Simply by suggesting that the Khans could be allies, she's open to that idea and gives you the AOK. -okay. She's a good leader, she just needs someone to look after her. Being injured, she's frustrated that she can't fight. It's affecting her decision making. She just needs some love. Someone to cuddle with. I volunteer, but you know, she's not real, so you know, sad times. But we all need that. We all need some love. She's not heartless, and she's a good person. I genuinely like her. I simp hard for more. Please marry me. But she's just a little misguided. As a character, she is really well done. She's admirable and flawed. Woo! Woman power, woo! Then, last, and honestly, in the political hierarchy of leaders, literally last, which is kind of sad, is Ambassador Crocker. Out of all the leaders, he is most like Tandy. He hates violence and wants to make peace with the other factions, like the Kings. But bad politics alert, he has an ambassador position. You might as well use that title and wipe your ass with it. It does nothing. He has no real power. He's gotten nowhere. The high ups brush him off like he's a nobody. Hell, Mr. House refuses to meet with him after signing the New Vegas Treaty. Because he's a nobody and he doesn't matter. That's so sad because he would make a decent leader for the NCR. But politics doesn't reward those who do good. It's full of corruption. Kimball can't get more power if someone like Crocker was in charge. They gave him a nothing throw. He's just there to look pretty. The one genuinely good leader in the NCR, and he gets thrown under the bus by the bad ones. Bad politics by bad leaders hurt the people of the NCR. So the next point is heavy taxes, which is an issue, but I read the NCR haters on Reddit that that alone is the biggest argument against the NCR. Like, no joke. It's really cringe, and I'm, I'm gonna say this as nicely as I can. Well, actually, no, I changed my mind. I'm gonna be an ass about this. You are a moron if you think taxes alone makes the NCR bad. For real, my life has been so much happier not being a part of any fandom community. For real. Anywho, let's make that argument better for them, because they're clearly hateful degenerates like the Legion. It's not the heavy taxes alone and Kimball enforcing it. It's how they do it. Remember how Tandy wants peace and the NCR to be friends with their neighbours? Well, Kimball's NCR are more like a bully. They storm into someone else's territory and claim it's NCR's, and force the people to pay taxes and follow its laws, or they're forced to get out. Remember those allies you can make if you side with the NCR? Well, potentially, the NCR could kick them out of their lands and they take it for themselves. Great Khans? Get lost. Or the Wizard of the Apocalypse? get lost. Heavy taxes suck. They really do. But it's how they implement them when they take other land. It isn't illegal because the NCR's law says so. See you more on Redditors? That's a legit issue with the NCR. But taxes are bad. The concept of taxes is to be used to serve the people, to aid the people. I'm sorry, but if you think taxes alone is bad, you're an idiot. Uh, a smaller point is Jacobstown. Maybe Kimball is afraid of mutants or he just wants land, but for some reason the NCR wants to provoke the mutants there to attack them, which gives them a the justification to fight back. Hmm, kind of sounds like something Kimball sort of did when he became the hero of the Mojave. I'm just saying, you know, that they're harassing a peaceful town, man. That's not cool. You wanna know what's sad? In Fallout New Vegas, Listen to NCR troopers. When they talked about joining the NCR, at the time it sounded amazing. Serving the NCR, protecting the people in California, and making a difference. But actually serving? They are stressed. They barely have any resources. People are dying around them. The food they eat is awful, and nothing gets done. They understand that serving in the NCR wasn't as great as it was made out to be. And like, one of the absolute worst things is like, one wife loses her husband, and the NCR can't retrieve his body. Like, that's how bad it is. They can't even get their own dead to bury them. How about the fact that the NCR are poorly resourced and are stretched thin? It's so bad that when a courier appears in an NCR outpost, they're like, help us, help us. They are so desperate for resources. When they kicked the Brotherhood of Steel out of Helios, they took their power armor. For real though, I prefer the NCR's power armor, but that's not the point. The NCR Rangers are treated badly. 
they carry the NCR so hard in the Mojave and they're expected to do the impossible. Like, a regular NCR trooper is moot compared to a ranger. And, to top it off, they get overworked by General Oliver, placed in bad spots, it drains them, it kills them. I feel so bad for the rangers, make his breath. How about the powder gangers? This one was suggested by my best friend. The NCR are so lacked in resources, they escaped and took over an NCR base. I could go on forever and ever. Fuck. It's bad for morale, it's bad for the troopers and the rangers, it displays weakness. It's horrible. And yes, you have Kimball and Oliver to blame for this. Hell, their food is garbage until the courier comes over and they're like, hey man, could you like fix the kitchen please? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I'm a mailman. Hey, you're a mailman? Fix the kitchen please. <laughs> Plus, could you find like a place where we can get uh, meat resources from? <laughs> Jesus. Oh god. Oh my fucking god. So, I'm going to say this up front, and uh, this is probably one of the worst things the NCR has done, and it's really depressing. And it's tied to the history they have with the Great Khans. So, the NCR and the Great Khans, it's a history filled with beatdowns and blood. As I mentioned earlier, the Khans aren't innocent themselves. So, let's explain this further. So, in the beginning, the Khans were part of the NCR. But due to disagreements, in the politics, conflict, they left the NCR, but this led to them raiding NCR traders. The boiling point was when the Khans kidnapped and killed four NCR troopers. And again, let's be honest, most likely the Khans who did this, did so without Papa Khan knowing. For real, that sort of thing happens a lot in the Fallout series. So that's really bad. But what the NCR did in retaliation was beyond cruel. The British Springs massacre happened. The NCR slaughtered the weak, the defenseless, the elderly, the women, and the children that were fleeing the conflict. I am aware there was miscommunication from the NCR side, but that doesn't justify it. So what if they were poorly resourced and they were stretched thin? They butchered children and women, those who were fleeing the conflict. I, I have no words. This is disgusting. This is vile. I... I'm not going to defend this. I love the NCR, but I'm sorry. This is inexcusable. This is monstrosity. Ugh, God. And you know what? I can't blame Papa Khan hating the NCR. They butchered his people. Innocent people. And every time I listen to him, I want to cry because you can feel the pain and how hurt he is. The NCR gunned them down like a pig farm. I... Uh, oh god, man. Just... Fuck. What's truly heartbreaking is that the NCR and the Great Khans can be allies in the end. The situation at Boulder City can end peacefully between the NCR and the Great Khans. Peace can be achieved between the two factions. But that doesn't matter, I guess. The NCR will always have the blood of the Great Khans on their hands. A few dishonourable mentions before we hit the conclusion. NCR troopers are known to shake down traders and making them pay a pass fee when making allies for the NCR. As amazing as that sounds, the courier themselves has to do all the heavy lifting. General Oliver makes a massive explosion when you go to the fort, which is just a waste of resources. Like, you've done all the work, and then he blows up the gates instead of using the gates. Like, wow, what's a waste of resources, you bloody moron. Finally, in Fallout New Vegas, no matter how much you are idolized by the NCR, technically speaking, you're not a military personnel, nor are you a citizen. So, you're treated like a third party, helping them externally. So, you get no medals, no job security, hell, they don't even offer you or invite you to be a citizen. Nah, instead they give you a golden branch, the highest form of civilian decoration that the Republic gives. That's nice, I guess, but it's just for show. Like, it's literally just for show. It really isn't much. 
compare that to the Legion, they put your face on a coin. You're part of the currency. You're part of history. Fuck. I'm not saying the NCR isn't grateful for the Courier's work. All I'm saying is that the NCR could do more to show appreciation. That's all. Ugh. That was so long. So yeah, I like the NCR. Tandy, for the most part, was a fantastic leader. Admittedly though, I love Tandy's NCR more than Kimball's NCR. Her NCR was the golden years before it turned into a mess, but at its core, the NCR can do some good. The NCR has the potential to help the people. Their expansion may be messy, and there will be hiccups on the road, but the end result won't lead the masses being put to slavery, death, or worse. Regarding the Mojave, I truly believe that the NCR is what's best for it, and given more time and resources, they can and will make a difference. They can be good for the Mojave. No other faction can potentially help the most people. The NCR are big enough and have the influence to do so. However, it's also important to never forget the sins of the NCR. They have done so much wrong. As a supporter of the NCR, all I can say is that maybe one day the NCR will return to their golden roots and be what Tandy dreamed of. Will that happen? Probably not, with all the corruption within it. But being part of the bear is about hope. Hope that things will get better for the people. Hope that no matter what is thrown at it, the NCR will overcome it. Even if the Legion wins the second battle of Hoover Dam, forcing the NCR to retreat, they will leave the Mojave while they still have hope. So yep, I just explained why I love the NCR, and then I told them a new asshole. So what did we learn in this video? Stop idolizing the factions in the Fallout series. It is pretty cringe. Also, NCR best faction was veteran ranger armor. Get fucked, Legion. No, no, I, I, I'm sorry. That was that was uncalled for, and that's a really, really bad uh, reason for wanting to like a faction. Actually, the best faction is the Unity. Do you join the Unity, or do you die here? Join. Die. Join. Die.